Today, I'm cross-stitching from a photo. Some assembly required. As you may know, I am trying to teach myself how to cross-stitch. I tried a kit, which was pretty fun. I've made a few of my own patterns, kind of cartoony and simple, but cool, I, I think. Now I'm trying to see if I can make my own cross-stitch pattern based on a photograph. Let me know in the comments, what kind of cross-stitch do you like? Do you like the more cartoony, blocky kind of cross-stitch? Do you like something more realistic? Can I even make something realistic with tiny little X's of embroidery floss? Let's find out. I'm sure that there's an app or a program somewhere that can just turn your photos into cross-stitch patterns. Unfortunately, I'm convinced that I can just figure out how to do it myself. So that's what I'm gonna try. I picked a photo from a recent greenhouse trip. The camellias were blooming, which was just a really fortunate coincidence. We just went because it was still freezing and we needed a little reminder about how nice plants are. I have decided to try my luck with this picture. It has a nice flowery shape, with some good contrast. I thought it might have the best chance of actually looking like a flower by the time I finished. Since I haven't found a cross stitch app yet, and I probably should one of these days, I brought my photo into Procreate, added a grid pattern on another layer. There's a grid brush. I didn't draw each line individually. And then I filled in all the boxes with five different shades of pink and three shades of green. There was a lot of squinting involved. Oh, but wait, that's not all. Next, I taped two sheets of my graph paper together to transfer my big old pattern. Then I can just painstakingly transfer each tiny little box to the paper. I'm really hoping this is going to be worth it. I'll probably learn something at least. There's the first half, looking intimidating. Oh boy, that's a lot of squares. It almost looks flowery. It could just be because I've been staring at it. I decided to use numbers instead of colored pencils because I just don't have enough shades of pink. Okay, it's time to get started. I picked out my colors from my stash and cut out my fabric, which looks so small compared to the graph paper, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be huge. Small should be more manageable at least, I think. I marked the center with this pin, and then I counted up and over to my starting point. I'll start with the lightest pink on this patch at the top. I don't have a clever reason why, I just had to pick a place and get going. It begins! Here's the top of the first petal. The pink could be lighter, I guess, but at least it won't blend right into the fabric. Making progress! This is exciting! I have to very carefully follow the pattern or I get totally lost. I feel like it's especially important not to mess up the first color. It's kind of the foundation for all the other colors to fit into. I see some petals! It looks weird to me, but I'm going to just keep on believing in the process. Woo! Check it out! I'm finished with the lightest pink. It kind of looks like a flower. Time for the next pink. At first I was worried they might be too similar, but the color darkens as I add more stitches. I'm still on track. Ooh, there's all of the second pink and it looks even better. The middle pink is up next. Okay, this is pretty fun. It's really starting to look like petals. By the third pink, it's getting easier to find where the stitches go, which I appreciate. I can kind of use the first two colors as roadmaps to at least figure out where I am. Woo, here are the first three pinks. Now let's see how it looks with the dark pinks. Hopefully still good. I feel like this could be a little bit dark, but I did want some nice contrast. 
It looks like we'll be getting plenty of that. And here we have pink number four. Only one pink left, and it's the very dark maroon. So I'll basically just be filling in all these little gaps. That shouldn't be too hard. Oh boy, and I thought the last one was dark, but it makes sense for my gradient. Keep going. Well, that's some nice, intense shadow. Cool. Now all it needs are some nice green leaves. Hopefully that will make it look a little bit less like a random floating blossom in space. Here's the lightest green. It looks a teeny bit funny so far. But let's just keep going with the medium green. I mean, that's starting to look better. And now I'll add the dark green. Ooh, nice and dark. That should balance out the leaves anyway. Let me just snip that last end and ta-da! That looks positively floral. That's about all I was hoping for, so job well done. Let me pop it in a frame and see how it looks. The mat kind of cuts off the edges and it might be a little too much white, but it will absolutely do for now. How about that? I can make up my own cross stitch pattern. Who would have thought? Now I know that there is some sort of program that would totally 100% make my life easier. If you have any advice on which ones that you like or you've heard of, feel free to leave that in the comments and maybe I will try it next time. Because this works, but it could be quicker <laughs> and a little bit less like, what color is that? I don't know. And what do you think I should cross stitch next? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of video and you're not subscribed yet, you can do that right underneath the little video box and click the all notification button so you don't miss anything. New videos come out every Saturday, so stay tuned for the next one. And until then, be awesome. And I'll see you later. Bye.